for the chat. Can you do that, Dale? I'll try to. Yeah. All right. I understand. So try. <laughs> so we're recording this. So Larry, I'll turn it over to you to get going, and then. Okay. Uh, Let me uh, do that. By the way, this is uh, COVID, Larry. You're, you're viewing here with his Corona beard. It'll be gone when the virus is uh, <laughs> more copacetic. Okay, let's uh, get this puppy up and rolling. And I think this is the slide I want. Not sure, but it looks good. So welcome to the San Antonio user group meeting, uh, D365, CRMUG, and whatever other UG people are interested in. Uh, glad to see uh, some folks out there. Hopefully we'll have a few more to, uh, to check in. Uh, we are meeting virtual. This is our first virtual meeting, and uh, things can be a little bit different. Uh, this is only our first meeting of the year. We didn't have a, year, a meeting back uh, in the first quarter. Um, we were kind of kind of looking at March, and then everything fell apart. So uh, this is our first meeting of uh, of uh, 2020. Um, Hopefully, virtual meeting format will work out well for everybody. Uh, a couple of tips here from uh, courtesy of the D365 UG. Please mute yourself if you're not speaking. Uh, corollary to that is if you want to speak, please unmute yourself so we can hear you, Dale. Uh, you can also put your questions in the chat. Uh, Dale has agreed uh, to attempt at least to uh, follow the chat. And uh, probably at the end of the uh, of the session, maybe uh, pass those on to uh, to Nick, our presenter. Uh, I think we have a hand raising uh, feature. I'm not sure how that uh, really works, so I'll leave that on your own. Uh, if you have a webcam, which probably everybody uh, does, so go ahead and uh, turn it on so we can see you. Although you don't have to. If you want to remain anonymous, that's fine as well, especially if you've got something going on in the background that you would rather not us uh, be part of. That's uh, another reason not to. It says here to state your name before speaking. I don't know how necessary that may be, although, it, it well, I guess it probably is because I'm not seeing anybody's names pop up on here. So uh, if you are going to ask a question or whatever, please uh, uh, give us your name. Uh, before you start and turn up the volume and uh, speak clearly. Uh, first thing we like to do is introductions. Uh, as I introduce you, if you'd give us your name, uh, what company you're with and what your role is with the company, uh, what uh, Microsoft Dynamics version you're, uh, you're using, uh, whether or not you attended a user group conference like Summit or whatever this past year, uh, also, what you uh, think you might get out of this uh, out of this session, and anything you want to tell us about what you've done uh, uh, during quarantine. I'll start off. My name is Larry Lentz. I am the uh, owner of Lentz Computer Services here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I do uh, these days primarily uh, training for uh, Dynamics. I've been in business now. This is my 31st year as an independent uh, consultant. Uh, during a lot of those years, I spent it uh, taking care of uh, uh, small businesses' networking needs, providing the hard hardware, software, and uh, expertise for that. But I've also been involved in the CRM space, started off with ACT and then went to Goldmine, was a Goldmine Gold partner at one point, and then... Uh, Switched over to uh, what now Dynamics, and then was Microsoft Business Solutions uh, CRM back in about 2004. So I've been uh, kind of at this uh, for a while. Uh, been an MVP now, Microsoft uh, Most Valuable Professional for Dynamics. Uh, actually, business uh, applications, I think they're calling us now, uh, since 2006. So this is my 14th and a half year. Don't know that I'm going to have a 15th year. We'll, we'll see. I always say that. And I can't see any reason to renew me, but they seem to keep doing it. So we'll see. Maybe being an old man helps. Uh, what do uh, you hope to gain out of this meeting? Well, I'm interested in hearing uh, Nick talk about AI Builder and also just trying to uh, 
pick up the uh, uh, or, or trying to, to keep the group going and, and get some enthusiasm here. Quarantine time started for me a little early this year. Uh, everybody kind of looks to March. I look to the end of January when mine kind of started. And actually, probably the uh, affliction started around Christmas time. I came down with uh, spinal stenosis and I could hardly walk. Uh, for quite a while. Uh, I have a walker that I have <laughs> left over from an earlier uh, bout with some issues a number of years ago. As a matter of fact, right after the last uh, user group summit I went to. And uh, anyway, so I had surgery in uh, the end of February. Just thank goodness before everything uh, blew up. Otherwise, I'd still be on that walker and being less and less pleasant to be around. But uh, anyway, so quarantine has been... Uh, um, kind of a continuation of things for us. Anyway, uh, let's see. How about uh, Nick? You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name's uh, my name's Nick Dolman. I'm going to be presenting on AI Builder a little bit later today. So I have a slide that kind of gives you my background and stuff. But I've been an MVP now for uh, three years, and uh, like Larry, hoping again for, for for another one, but we never know till July first. But I think I'm okay. Um, I can't imagine uh, changing anything. What I've been doing, I've been presenting and writing blogs and stuff. So yeah, and um, uh, the only I haven't really attended many. In, the only in person event I attended this year was Scottish Summit uh, that was in late February, February 29th, and. At that time, that's when things started to kind of creep up and pop up. And I'm actually happy for those guys, for the guys who organized that. Um, uh, the the guys in Scotland there, they uh, if they had planned that a week or two later, I'm not sure if they would have been able to, to hold it. So anyways, and in terms of quarantine, I, I work from home most of the time anyway. So I've just been mm -hmm. continuing and working. Very good. Uh, Dale. I'm Dale Wilkin, DLW Software LLC, and um, I'm an independent uh, CRM consultant and a developer. Um, Is that I your use... farm in the background? Say again? Is that your farm? Yeah, oh, I just put the background there. That's just one of the uh, <laughs> background screens because I had I'm, bright I'm... light behind me. I didn't want to blind people. <laughs> um, I use uh, primarily the, the latest online version of uh, Dynamics 365. Um, I didn't go to the UG conference or event, but I did have a chance this year to go uh, to uh, the Microsoft Business Application Summit and also to build because both of them were, were virtual. So <laughs> I did uh, go to the, the, the summit. Yeah. And um, I just want to learn more about what uh, Nick's going to be talking about today because that's one area I just haven't gotten into much yet. So, and that's it for me. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. How about VJ? Hello. Hi. Hello, VJ. Um, my name is Vijay. Uh, I'm currently working on Cap Metro, uh, Austin. Uh, uh, currently, we are using uh, Dynamics 365 online version, uh, latest one. Um, currently, we are moving from uh, web client to unified interface. Uh, previously, I didn't attend any uh, UG conference. This is the first time I'm attending. I'm hoping to get... Uh, more knowledge on uh, AI, AI uh, features in uh, Microsoft 365. Okay, very good. Well, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. And you said you were in Austin? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Glad to have you. Uh, let's see, Sandra. Hello, um, Sandra Williams. I'm also <clears throat> out of Austin. I work with VJ at Cap Metro. Um, like you said, we're on the uh, online version uh, 365. Uh, I haven't attended any conferences or events this past year. I uh, haven't had the opportunity. And basically, uh, just see what 
uh, we can learn that me and VJ can work together to improve what we use our database for. Um, and then with our customer service department, because that's the group I work with. And we use it to uh, put in our customers' concerns and comments and things for um, the business that we're in. Okay, very good. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Have you been to one of our local meetings? Yes. Yeah, Sandra, have you been to one of our meetings here in San Antonio? No, I have not. This is my first one. Okay. I know I've had some people come down from Austin to our meetings, and somehow your name seemed somewhat familiar. Yeah, I thought you looked familiar, Mr. Lance. I was like, I think I was, he was one of our speakers at the last one before all of this happened, but yes, sir. Okay, very good. Uh, Alan. Howdy. Alan Walker here, Capital Metro. I'm your customer service manager in Austin, Texas, and work with Sandra VJ. And uh, Jothi was on the list. She may still be out there to talk in just a second. But um, we all work you know, to serve our uh, customers, transportation customers around the city. And the CRM, you know, you've already heard from VJ and Sandra. But uh, it's, you know, we take our complaints and compliments and all that kind of stuff in dynamic CRM and, and try to turn that around into useful, actionable, actionable information for our customers. And um, we've been using it for, I think, about four years now. And um, initially, it was a, a, a pretty good struggle to get it all set up. Um, uh, but and Jyoti kind of helped oversee that, and then VJ came along uh, a year or two later. But uh, that's what we use now, and we continue to improve upon it and You're keep it fed. Video, I think. I'm sorry, Alan. Yes. Hello. Can anybody else hear Alan? Sorry, what was that? I can. Yeah, I can hear. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, we hear you, Larry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. <laughs> so anyhow, with that said, our call center is uh, all operating from various homes at this point. So uh, we were able to, uh, to to pack up and do all of our call center work from home and uh, and Teams meetings like this on a regular basis. So I'll turn it back over to you, Larry. Thank you. Okay, very good. Well, welcome board, Alan. Glad to have you. Hope you all will uh, continue to uh, to join in. Um, somebody want to look on, uh, Nick, why don't you look on the participation list and see if I've uh, missed anybody. I've got a few well, more we, people on the registration we think, list. We've got someone from the Netherlands here, I believe. Ronald? I think you are right. This is indeed Ronald, Ronald Lemon. Um, oh, no. Who let him is. in? Well, the, you asked me why, why do people come to this meeting? Well, it is to hear some familiar voices of long-term French men. It's been a while since I, I've st seen and talked to some of you guys. It's great to, to attend here. Might be a long distance, but it still feels like a uh, like a yeah a home play here. Oh, great! <laughs> so, uh, so, how's Natalie? She's doing great. Yes. Good. And Flynn. Flynn is doing awesome. And, and you talking have about an, another one, don't you? Yes, I do. Colin, that is the the youngest one. Yeah. Talking about Quarantine time, we did watch him to make that, that magic step from crawling to walking. Oh, good. I wouldn't have seen that if there wouldn't be corona and the, 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 the crisis of working from home. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to see you give Natalie my love. I will. I definitely will. Good. Good. Well, welcome aboard. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, we have uh, Chris Simmons. Chris, you want to give an intro? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Um, so I'm actually based in Dallas. I got forwarded this uh, information from a gentleman based out of Austin, but uh, I'm actually a technical, technical specialist at Microsoft. Just uh, want to listen in and uh, see how things are going. Um, you know, uh, done a little bit of AI builder myself, but just love seeing what's out there and, and how other people are talking about it. Okay. Uh, can you go down the, uh, the little list here for the, oh, the intro? Sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, so I covered the first two. Uh, Dynamics version, working with a lot of it. Uh, yeah. A lot more uh, Power Apps lately than anything, Power Platform. Uh, no UG conferences. I, I think uh, I've got, I'm on the uh, mailing list for the Dallas chapter, but I, I'll have to go double check that. But I did, you know, of course, attend MBAS. Uh, 
again from today's meeting just really wanted to uh see how you know this topic is talked about and, and the questions that come up and uh, just you know it's a fun topic right uh and then what have you done in this time of quarantine to connect with others uh as much of the virtual conversations as possible right uh, you know doing what i can to to get on all kinds of calls that's that's what we've been doing Okay, well, very good. Well, welcome aboard, sir. Glad to have you in there from Dallas. Uh, anybody else, Nick? No, I think we've, there we was. Got, uh, no, we got one more. We got um, Jayothi. Yeah, I saw, I saw her there, but then disappeared off my list. So. Oh, okay. If, She's on the meeting chat list that she joined, but I don't see her on no, currently. On the, no. Uh, just refresh. No, I don't see. So you're on the list here. So um, if she pops back in and maybe we can put her on the spot <laughs> or uh, we can keep going. OK, so we're kind of kind of done up on intros. Yep. Let's... OK, very good. Well, let's move along here. Uh, today's agenda. First, welcome and introductions. That's what we just went through. Then I'll give you some uh, news and events. In other words, propaganda from the mothership, uh, CRMUG. Then our main event will be uh, Nick Dolman, uh, MVP, who will be giving us a, a talk on AI for everyone, an intro to AI builder. And he's got a lot more words than that, but I kind of left him off of this slide. Uh, then we'll go into roundtable discussions and an Ask the MVP session. And uh, Nick and I, hopefully Nick will still be here for the uh, uh, Ask the MVP session. Uh, this is obviously a, uh, a new format, not only being virtual, but uh, we kind of decided to uh, uh, kind of change up the format a little bit, especially since it is virtual, it makes it a little easier. And rather than an in-person meeting, which we couldn't have had anyway, uh, those meetings usually were about uh, four and a half hours. We uh, typically started at 1130 and went till four in the afternoon having uh, two or three presenters. And some people found that hard to uh, to get to. I think some of those same people are not in this meeting either. So that's another point. But uh, we may try to do some meetings that are going to be short ones like this with a little bit of company business, so to speak. And then uh, the uh, 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 one presentation, maybe maybe two, depending upon uh, the length of them and uh, see how that works out although i i would like to have some uh, in-person meetings uh not, not necessarily every time but uh from time to time because there's nothing like being able to see everybody and well i was about to say shake hands but elbow bump at least or whatever and uh, and get some networking in and and uh, and so on so we'll be sure and invite nick down for that one <laughs> When, when we go. Nick, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is uh, in Ottawa, Canada. So we've definitely got a uh, international group here with Ron there in uh, outside of Amsterdam and, and uh, Nick in Ottawa. And I'm in Texas, so I mean, and so is Dale, so that makes it even more international, I guess. So that's what we're about. So let's get on with the news and events. Uh, our sponsors, we have a number of sponsors this year. Uh, quite a uh, an explosion from the last uh, few years. I'll let you kind of look at them, uh, look at the uh, uh, at the logos and so on for a moment. Uh, if you're interested in being a sponsor uh, of the uh, uh, CRMUG, uh, contact Gretchen Ingberson, uh, who's with uh, the uh, the user group Dynamics Communities. Uh, her name is, or email address is down here. I'll leave that up for a second in case you uh, have an interest in doing that. And if I move on too fast uh, and you still need it, uh, let me know and I'll get it back for you. Microsoft, by the way, has been a, uh, a sponsor of this for uh, quite a number of years. Uh, I joined up back uh, pretty soon after it got started. I wasn't in on the first year, but I I uh, joined in in the second year, and Microsoft had not yet quite uh, uh, gotten on board. They were thinking about it, but they've uh, come on board uh, full steam uh, ever since. So uh, I'm glad to have Microsoft, obviously, as a backer of Microsoft uh, Focus Group. 
There are a number of other, I think, or at least one other uh, user group, uh, Dynamics user group here in the San Antonio area having to do with the uh, uh, with power amps. We had one of them at our meeting, uh, uh, I guess, last summer uh, or, or last uh, last fall and uh, was hoping they might show up here today. Anyway, moving right along, uh, Microsoft wants to hear from you. They have a, uh, a website that uh, you can go to and give them suggestions and so on. Uh, it's called Ideas. So if you go to experience.dynamics.com slash ideas, then you can roam around that, see maybe some of the other ideas, and then uh, let them know what you think uh, might be, uh, be good things going forward. Uh, would invite you all to get involved. We're always looking for uh, leadership and, and folks to help out with the, uh, with the user group here. So if you're interested, you can be a presenter. Uh, you can serve on the uh, leadership committee, uh, write blogs, whatever. Uh, whatever uh, fits your fancy, contact uh, uh, Dale or myself, and we'll, uh, we'll suck you right on in. Uh, membership in the uh, organization has benefits. You get uh, on-demand access to technical content library. Uh, they're constantly putting out uh, webinars, and those webinars are recorded, so you have access to the webinars. Uh, you get discounts on some of the deep dive training that uh, the group puts on, uh, the uh, academy and, and other events. And I think I have a slide about some of the uh, other types of training. Uh, networking, it's a, a great way to network and meet other folks. And one of the things that I like about our meetings is, and I think probably the most important part, uh, sorry, Nick, is the uh, discussion and roundtable at the, at the end, because that gives everybody to the opportunity to chat with each other to uh, uh, you know, kind of trade experiences, and somebody says, "Well, this is how we do that," and you might say, "Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That sounds pretty good." So I think that's a uh, uh, very definite uh, advantage. Obviously, one of the big advantages to membership is local user group meetings like this one and virtual communities. Um, However, we don't discriminate. We'll let you come to our meetings, uh, whether you're a member or not, if you're interested in it. Certainly promote it or would uh, like to hope you would join. Um, you may or may not get fed at one of our live meetings if, you have, if you're not a member because they kind of, uh, they provide the food for us. Uh, and there are a few other uh, uh, benefits here as well. Uh, similar to joining just about any group, I guess. Uh, the Dynamics Communities, which is the name of the company that actually is the umbrella that, that owns all of these different user groups, they're based out of Tampa, have a number of events that are going on around the world. Uh, we've got a, uh, uh, but we had, well, no, I guess it's today. Uh, they're doing a Focus North America. It's a virtual meeting. It's uh, today, tomorrow, and Saturday, I guess. Well, it was the uh, it on was the 29th, uh, there is the uh, European uh, Summit in Barcelona. Ron, are you going to that? Not this year. Not this year, okay. You've been before, right? Uh, we've been to a number of events. I think the last one I went to is, is Portugal in Lisbon. That must have been extreme, I guess. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, great. And of course, you're probably familiar with the one in Melbourne. Uh, definitely, yes. <laughs> Makes sense. It's an international yeah. group here, isn't it? Huh? It's an international group here. Yeah. If it's yeah. Australia, the Netherlands, Ottawa, yeah. it's the Netherlands. Uh, the uh, North American uh, Summit is coming up uh, in October, as it usually does. This year, it's going to be in Nashville. So that ought to be uh, interesting. I think they've had it in Nashville before. Yeah. And they're going to have Extreme there as well. Extreme has uh, been taken over apparently by the Dynamics community. So it's interesting that they are concurrent. I guess the user group is the, Nor uh, the, the uh, North American Summit. Extreme is usually for uh, computer guys. 
<laughs> for partners and so on. Uh, Focus Europe will be in the fall and uh, Power Platform World Tour is going on. They show a couple of, uh, of meetings here. One's past, well, both of them are past. So anyway, the group puts on a lot of different uh, things. Uh, this is a slide for Focus. I just kind of left it on there so you'd get the idea that uh, Focus comes around every year. Uh, Hunter really uh, enjoys a lot of good presentation or actual training sessions that last uh, uh, a couple of hours or half a day each, and there, there are several of them. A uh, little, little bit on the uh, community summit. This is the one in Barcelona coming up the 29th. Well, that was a really pretty picture of, uh, I guess that's of Barcelona. I've never been there, never been to Spain, but uh, nonetheless. And of course, the, well, let's see, Melbourne. Uh, Ron's not going there this year, so we'll just skip that slide. <laughs> um, I pick on Ron because uh, he lived in Australia for what, two or three years? Three years I did, one and a half years in Sydney, one and a half years in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. Such a shame that all these uh, in-person events are being canceled. So Larry, yeah. thanks for nicing all this uh, digital now. <laughs> oh, that could be. The uh, When you all came and visited us, you were living in Melbourne, weren't you? I think it was. But yeah, I think, I think you were. Yeah. Okay. So I mentioned uh, some of the uh, other learning opportunities. There is an academy that uh, uh, the group uh, has. It's a uh, uh, kind of a high level or uh, maybe I should say a deep dive type of training. And uh, it does cost money, but uh, it, uh, I've heard good, uh, good things about it. I've never attended one of the classes nor taught them. Uh, kind of talked about that when they first got it going way back when. Uh, I kind of was a little bit in on, on the beginning of it, but uh, nonetheless. And we also have something called the Black Belt uh, training series. These are, are uh, for, you know, real, uh, real hardcore type of, type of folks, I guess. Um, so anyway, these are some additional training opportunities that you have. Uh, we also have a Power Apps and uh, an Automate Black, black Belt uh, training as well. So if you're interested in any of those, you might want to uh, take advantage of that. And with that, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to see if I can unshare my screen and let uh, our presenter uh take over uh mr nick is going to present uh, an intro to ai builder nick dolman brrrm, our heavy okay. lifter yeah thanks larry all right so just making sure you guys can see my uh, screen it says ai for everyone yep we can see that okay perfect so i'm not going to spend too much time in powerpoint because i think you guys probably all want to see uh Whoops, I'm gonna move this over here. You guys probably wanna see the, uh, the actual software in action. So that's what I like to do as well. So just a quick intro, I gave an intro for myself, but for those of you who might not know me, um, I'm in Ottawa, Canada. Um, been working with uh, Dynamics CRM oh, since 2003 when I first came out. Uh, before that, I did a lot of work with Great Plains as well as a technical consultant. So. Uh, been kind of living and breathing all of this stuff for quite a while. Uh, you can check out my blog and connect with me on LinkedIn if you'd like. Um, follow me on Twitter. I try to keep the, the focus on the technology there. I've uh, been a MVP since 2017. Uh, last year, I, I had the honor of being awarded the Dynamics 365 User Group All-Star. Um, and I, I didn't stuff the ballot box or anything. Somehow people just <laughs> like what I was doing. Uh, I also became a certified trainer last year as well, and that was uh, it was kind of nice to add to my repertoire of things. So you didn't really come to, to hear about me. You really want to talk about AI Builder. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the on the presentation, but I will want to. I do want to cover up a couple fundamentals when we talk about AI Builder. So just a quick kind of poll of the crowd: uh, who who here has heard about AI Builder? Has anybody played with it at all yet, or 
uh, have any experience with it? I've certainly heard about it. I haven't played with it quite yet. Okay. I'm in the same camp. Heard about it and <laughs> looking forward for a first a real life demo. Okay, perfect. So and I'm the same way. Okay, cool. So yeah, so part of it, like why why would we care about AI builders? So I think if we if we talk to our customers, whoops, I'm on a go back here. I supposed to hit something. Um, we talk about artificial intelligence. I think a lot of companies and stuff, it's kind of very science fictiony. It's in the future. It's stuff that like even a small organization, like, okay, this isn't for us. It's a little bit too far fetched or a little bit too much out there. But the nice thing about the AI builder and those tools is Microsoft has kind of brought it down to for people that are, that are used to doing things like configuring Dynamics 365, uh, building power apps, uh, building reports, they can actually begin to use AI Builder for some very kind of regular things in their business. And that can really help them out. So it's really not making, it's making it easy, making it. All right, so let's try this again. So where did, uh, I'll try uh, I want you to start from the top of the slide. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, so basically, uh, I'll quickly go through this again. The idea with AI Builder, we want to make it approachable for everybody. So it's going to be, it's just as easy as you're building a power app or modifying your Dynamics 365. That's the whole idea. Let's AI Builders making artificial intelligence approachable and easy to use. The, the other good reason is there's a lot of, you know, there's a talent shortage. So if you need to get a data scientist or whatever, these, these folks are generally very expensive resources and a lot of smaller companies and organizations, it's like they just don't have the dollars to invest into that kind of talent shortage and that kind of thing. Um, and of course, there's a lot of you know expertise. There's a lot of business problems you can solve with artificial intelligence and AI. And AI Builder helps kind of you bring that in and you can kind of start small and build up from that. And I'm gonna give you a bit of an example of an app uh, that can kind of show you some of the things you can do. So where it all sits, uh, it sits on the Power Platform so it can be accessed by different things now. For those of you, I, I, I have to keep reminding folks that Dynamics 365 at the end of the day is a power app. It's just, it sits on the power platform. It's a power app. We can do anything that we can do in terms of talk, tapping into Power BI and Power Automate. So I'm going to turn off that. Give me two seconds. That's really going to annoy me, the slideshow. I need to shut off the timings here. Here we go. I'm not sure why that turned on. Anyways. Um, it sticks so you can do things with flow, you can do power virtual agents and all these things. But of course, our kind of focus is what can we do in the Dynamics 365 space? So when we talk about AI Builder, we really talk about two different approaches to it. So there's we, we're going to talk about um, models. Um, and from these models, we can do different things. So there's two types. There's the pre-built models. And we'll take a look at those. So those are things that Microsoft has set up. They have it sitting on Azure. And we can build power apps or extend our Dynamics 365 to take advantage of these things. Or is we that, could build. Nick, yep. Is that kind of, is that kind of like templates for for uh, like automate and so on? Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, Larry. Um, we can. It's sort of components that we can tie in, and I'll I'll show you an example of that. What we can do with it. Okay. So. And so we talk about what we can do with it. We can add components to our Canvas apps. And of course, our Canvas apps can tie into our model-driven apps into our Dynamics 365. And we can even do things that begin to predict some stuff in, in Power Automate. So if you're using Dynamics 365 to you know, track our sales opportunities, based on the past history, we could take some of that information and feed it into an AI model and then it can begin to predict if uh, based on this opportunity, based on these parameters, it's going to can give you some a bit better insight on how successful you are able to close that deal or not. Or things like in customer service, we can begin to see if people are sending us emails and the emails are kind of nasty. Uh, we can actually use some of the AI models to detect some of the sentiment. Are people happy? Are they not happy? And then how can we deal with those people as well as we're working through our cases? Um, so when I talk about the, the trainable models, these are the ones that are available. Uh, we talk about their prediction, like I said, about the, you know, the opportunity tracking and that kind of thing. There's also form processing. So if you're receiving invoices on paper or maybe even as PDFs from a specific supplier, 
then what you could do is go through that forms processing and it can pick out those data points and put that in a database. So this could save people from having to rekey in a lot of information. Now, currently the forms processing, it has to, you have to sort of train that model and has to be the same sort of format, but it is something that's there that can help you speed up your business if you are having people like, you know, rekeying a lot of information. Um, object detection, I'm gonna give you a demo of object detection today. And really what that is, is you can begin to take pictures of things or use your camera, whether it's on your phone or whatever, and then it can actually begin to pick out those objects. So I'm gonna show you a bit of an inventory kind of tracking app using that technology. And there's other things like text classification where we can begin to push in a lot of data and move out tags and classify that to you know track sentiment, making people happy, unhappy, improve some of those customer experience and get some other insights from that. So it's really taking a lot of data and letting the machine kind of do the hard work for us. And then there's also some of these pre-trained models. So these are ones that Microsoft, well, Microsoft has built the other ones, but we have to train them. These are ones that are what we call pre-trained, um, business card reader. I'm not sure if I find, I, I don't really use business cards anymore. Um, I realize some people still do. And I know even for dynamic CRM, that was always an ask for the customers going, hey, what, what business card scanner does uh, dynamic CRM work with? Well, now they have one built in and it's using AI to be able to read those business cards and put that information into your system. There's other things like key phrase extraction, so we can actually you know, put in a document and get some of those you know, key points out of that. Um, language detection, and I think anybody who's used uh, the Google app and used Google Translate, um, I know I've used this, uh, not so much the Microsoft We're version. We're having of trouble hearing you. Okay, I'm gonna try to switch my internet connection, so just give me one second. I'm going to try to flip to a different one. Yeah, okay. I'm back. Can you guys hear me again? I can. Okay. Love you. All right. Let's hope this goes a little bit better. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go back. Uh, do you guys still see my you see my my PowerPoint, right? Probably not in presenter mode. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Anyways. So I talked about language detection, and I think we've all seen the Google version of this. So Microsoft has that as well, where we can scan a piece of text and it can actually determine what language it's in. Um, there's text recognition, which again, I'll give you a bit of a demo on how that works to be able to read some, it'll even read my handwriting. So that's actually pretty powerful right there. And then also about sentiment analysis. And I mean by that, we can detect certain sentences and certain things. And uh, there's a bit of a fun demo I can do with that as well. So a couple things here. And then, so yeah, let's, instead of just watching PowerPoints, let's go into an actual demo. A any questions so far? Cool, you guys can still hear me okay? Yep. Excellent. All right, so I'm gonna start out with, I'm gonna go into the, the make.powerapps.com. And for those of you, uh, this is sort of the new, what we call the new maker experience for Power Apps. But this could be the same uh, if you're having, if you use Dynamics 365 online, you go to make.powerapps.com, you can actually go into that as well and modify and configure your Dynamics 365. So we have, uh, uh, this time it's just a straight common data service environment. I don't have what we would call the first party apps like sales or service installed, but really it's the same sort of the layout and format. Uh, we have our solutions, we have all other things here. So I'm just gonna go quickly go into apps and I have this um, model driven app, it's called uh, the Contoso AI products. And really, if you're using Dynamics 365, you'll probably recognize the layout and things like that. So this is just a very, very simple power app. It's a model driven app but I have uh, some different products here. So I just have a product database. Of course, Dynamics 365 Sales has the product catalog. So very simple. And what we have is three different uh, brands of tea. So this could be Contoso. Uh, we could say Contoso, because Contoso does everything. So Contoso is actually selling tea to retailers. So we have our database. And then in here, if I look at the records, it's just keeping a very simple track of the quantity on hand. So just very simple inventory tracking. And of course, you know, anybody that's worked with Dynamics uh, CRM or 365 knows how, how easy it is to, to do all that kind of stuff. What we're interested in, in AI we want to do is we want to build an app that we can actually give to 
maybe some of our salespeople that, you know, are traveling to store to store so they can actually take a picture and track and do an inventory count. Now, I've seen it in the past where a lot of places, the uh, these guys that will go out to the store, they'll actually go to the shelves and they have to do a physical count. They actually have to physically count and then they're going to write on a clipboard how many products are in stock and whether it's in a retail store or a warehouse. And it gets to be pretty tedious and not only have to write it on paper and then they give it to somebody or they rekey it into their system. So it kind of, and then they might have written down a number wrong. So of course, all these things are kind of hard to uh, keep track of. So we're going to use AI Builder. And what we want to do is we're going to build a, what we call an object detection model that's going to be able to take a picture of that shelf and count how many cans of tea are on that shelf. So within my make.powerapps.com environment, I'm going to go, there's an AI Builder. Now, all of you should see that AI Builder tab that should be there now. And I'm going to go into uh, my build here. Now, what's going to happen is, for most of you, if you're trying this out, you're going to see that there's a trial. And I've got this on a, a, a trial that I just fired up this morning. So you can try this out for 30 days and you can do whatever you like and try it out. But of course, once that trial is, runs out, um, Microsoft, again, they, they, want, a, they want a few, a few dollars your way every month to run this. And we can talk about licensing and pricing later. So I'm here and what I want to do is I want to build an object detection model. Now, again, I have different models here that I can do for different things. And we just don't have time today to go through each and every one of them. But what I'll do is I'm going to choose the object detection. And I'm just going to call this uh, T-tracking. And what we're going to need for this particular model is we're going to need images of the picture that we want to take because we're going to be training this model. So I'm going to hit create. And it's going to start to create this model. So what it's going to do is it's going to ask me kind of what I want to do. Is it common objects? Is it objects on retail shelves? Or is it even like brand logos? I'm just going to stick with the common objects for now. But you get the idea here. It's going to want to take pictures of things. So the AI model is going to know what to recognize if we take a picture or something. So I'm going to hit next. And now what are the models I what are the objects I want to detect? So this is where I actually wanted to detect my products. So I first need to define that. So I could actually add a new object here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select from my database. And what I mean by my database, it's the common data service environment, which of course could be a Dynamics 365 product catalog. So I'm just going to select from my database and it's going to see a listing of all my entities whether it's in uh, whether it's CDS or whether it's Dynamics 365. So I'm going to find um, my object detection product here. And I want to choose the name field. And I showed you that in my model driven app earlier. So I've selected that. And here's a listing of all my products. So these are the things I'm going to want the AI to, to be able to recognize. So I'm telling it, I said, I'm going to train you to recognize green tea mint green tea cinnamon, and green tea rose. So, so far, so good. I've selected those. And of course, if I was a real product database, it'd probably be a lot longer. And I'm going to hit next here. And then the next thing it's going to want to do, it's, it's not going to know on its own what these products look like. We're going to need to supply it with some information so the AI model can be trained. So if I just go to my add images, I'm just going to upload that from local storage. And I'm going to go find this uh, in my AI Builder lab here. So here's some object detection, and here's what I want to train it on. So as see here, I have a whole bunch of product images already. So I'm going to select all those and bring those in. So now you see that it's going to bring in a lot of different pictures, product pictures that it could have been taken at various places. And the thing, the key is with um, AI Builder, the more data you can give it, the smarter it will get. So it's going to require at least 15 images of each particular product. Now, this could get pretty tedious, but you got to realize 15 is probably not a lot for the AI Builder to recognize. And I'm not going to go through the whole process because I, I got a, a model that I built earlier. But you know, I just want to give you the uh, gist of the idea. So I've uploaded those products here and 
Now the next thing I knew is I need to help train the AA model. So I'm going to hit next. And so here's a picture of all my images. That's great. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to start at the beginning. And there's just a regular image of the three different T brands. So far, so good, but here are the tags applied. So what happens is if I move my mouse, this actually automatically highlights. So I can click on this and I'm gonna say, oh, this is a green tea rose. This is a green tea mint. And this is a green tea cinnamon. And we see here that we have the tags are beginning to be applied. And now I need to go into a slightly different picture. So again, we're training our AI model, green tea rose green tea cinnamon, green tea mint. And we're going to continually go through this whole process through all those images until we have at least 15 of those tags applied. Now, I'm not going to do that because you guys don't need to see me click on things for the next half an hour. Um, but if this is oh, something but, that... Huh. <laughs> if this is something that you probably want to implement in your own company, this is probably a great student job for someone to go in and begin to do all this tagging of all these images. But once you go through that process, then we have a model that we can train. So I'm just going to uh, I'll pop out. Um, see, I'm done tagging. It's going to complain that we don't have enough, uh, but that's OK. So I'm going to go back to my, uh, uh, my maker portal here and get out of this one. And I'm just going to go back into me AI builder section because I already have a model that's created. So I've gone through and what happens is after I've done tagging all of those particular images, so this is still in draft, so I can come back later. Um, it's going to go through a process of training. It's going to try to recognize, it's going to compare all those pictures and the AI system that's running in Azure is going to try to match up and be able to identify it. So we can test it out. So I can open up my AI object here. And it's telling me, based on the, the data that I gave it, it's about 93% accurate. Uh, that's actually pretty high, depending on how you're doing things. So again, we can try to improve this by adding more images. But what I'm going to do is I can do a quick test here. So let's hit the quick test. And I can drag and drop an image. So I'm just going to upload from my device. And I'm not going to use the images I've trained. I'm going to go through the test ones. And I'm just going to pick a random image. So here's the, the T. There's a picture of that. And the AI is going to take that image. It's going to put it in its uh, the, uh, the builder machine. And then it's going to recognize. It's going to say it's 99% sure that this is green tea cinnamon. It's 99% sure this is green tea mint. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to start over again. I'm going to try to bring up another image. So... And now this is the thing you got to watch it with AI, depending on, again, the more images you provide, the better, the smarter it will be. But if I'm going to click on things, a uh, different picture here where we actually don't have any pictures of tea at all, um, it still recognized this little notebook as green tea rose. I'm not sure why. And it recognized this pen as green tea rose at 65%. So we see those numbers are a little bit less. I would say this is way less than 92% sure that it is but again the more images i would have provided the better my model will be so this is for in terms of a demo it's not bad but obviously the more data we have the smarter our ai builder model will be so let's just close that so now that we've created this model what can we do with it well we could use power automate or flow or we could use power app so i'm going to actually use a, a canvas based app so i'm going to go into my uh let's go to my solutions and I like to build all my assets, whether they're flows or apps within the context of a solution. That way I can move it from my, my uh, dev environment, move it to my test environment or move it to my production. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna add a brand new Canvas app. Uh, we'll just pick the phone form factor for now. So I'm gonna dive into a bit with two Canvas based apps. And I know for some of you using Dynamics 365, this might be a little bit of an intro to Canvas apps as well. The nice thing about Canvas apps is they're very task based. So a lot of times if you, you know, you're trying to onboard new users, you find that you show them Dynamics 365, they get a little lost with all the buttons and the menus and all the different ways to navigate. 
But if their job is very straightforward, if they just have to collect some data or just do some very specific things, maybe building them a Canvas app might be a better way to go. Um, anyways, I have this Canvas here. So what I want to do is I want to add something to this Canvas. So I'm going to go into my insert here. And notice now within the Power Apps, I have this AI Builder button. So I can add different things here. So let's put on this object detector. And this object detector is going to be on my screen and I can resize that a little bit. Nick? And it's good. Yep. Yeah. Is that AI Builder button up there? Is that uh, uh, standard across across the uh, uh, Power Apps uh, Studio? Yep. It's not yep. because so, you've been playing with, with Power. I'm with the AI Builder. No, so it's available. It's a great question, Larry. It's available to everyone. However, in order to use it, you need to make sure that whether you have your AI builder trial going um, or you have a license for it. So if your trial expires or you don't have it activated, the button will still be there, but it will probably complain and it will tell you you need a license or you need to get a trial going or something. Gotcha. Thank you. So I'll, yeah, no problem. So it also needs a model. So I could have created a new model here, but we have that T product detection. That's the one we created earlier. So I want to link that up to my object detector. And then what I can do is I can actually just run that app right now. So I'm just going to run it on a test. So literally it took me three clicks to get there. I'm just going to click on the detect. And I'm in my test here. Again, I'm just going to pick a random one of my product images. And then by doing that, it's going to take a look at that picture and then try to determine what each product is. So we see here we got green tea rose, green tea mint, and green tea cinnamon. So it was able to detect that. Um, so this kind of app I could have running on a phone or a tablet. So if someone is working in the warehouse or out in the field going to retail stores, they could run this. So I'm going to actually open up another app that I've expanded a little bit from this. So let's go file. I'm going to open uh, Power Apps. Yeah, the product detector. Uh, I'm not going to save my other one. That's fine. So this is one. This is like a cooking show. This is one I prepared earlier. Um, so what I've done here is very much the same thing. I have my screen. I've added on my object detector, but I've also put on here what's called a gallery. And that gallery I have linked to my data source, which is a, which is basically my common data service, or it could be my Dynamics 365 database in the back end here. So I've got my products here. So it's showing me the quantities that we have. And I've also added a, an update button here. And that update button is going to update my Dynamics 365 database directly. So I can deploy this to a phone. Um, Let's uh, run that. And so let's just pretend I have my phone. I'm in the warehouse or I'm in a retail store. I go up to the shelf. I click on detect. And I just take a quick picture of what the shelf looks like. And what happens here is it's going through the process of the AI object. And it detected uh, green tea mint, green tea rose. Oh, green tea mint. So I made a mistake here for some reason, but anyways, so yeah, green tea cinnamon, it didn't quite recognize, but it did recognize green tea rose and green tea mint. And then what I can do here, so this is 544, this is 568, I hit update, and now it resets it now, 545, 569. So very quickly, we were able to build a Canvas app that does inventory counts. So I'm not sure if anybody's ever been in a warehouse and worked with a clipboard before and spent hours counting all the cans or counting all the boxes. This is an app that uses AI that can actually go through and make that job a lot easier. So of course, if it's faster and quicker, then of course they can count more and you can actually get your, uh, your warehouse counts done a lot faster. I know I used to work in a place where uh, anytime they do a stock count, it, they'd shut down on a Friday afternoon and they would be there till like midnight or later. Um, if they had these tools, they could have got that job done a lot faster. Any questions on the object builder so far? Does anybody think this is something they could maybe use in uh, their business? Okay. 
kind of depends, I guess, on what kind of business you're doing, but that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, so let's uh, let's do let's do a few other things with AI Builder because uh, it has a lot of neat little tricks. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to create a. Uh, let's going to create a new. Uh, let's go back here. Let's get out of this one. Um, I'm going to create a new a new uh, Canvas app. I'll just use a tablet. Just gives us a little bit more room. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is uh, actually I'm going to show you. So Father's Day is coming up this weekend, and I'm not sure how you guys do your your shopping. Usually, uh, between my wife and I, we kind of split. Let my wife time. do it for Father's Day. Oh, there you go, perfect. So, but there's probably certain things you want, right, Larry, for your Father's Day. Uh, uh, at least, yeah. <laughs> so let's take a look at my grocery list here. So I'm just going to bring up this. Uh, there we go. And this is sort of my handwriting. I like ribs. You like ribs, Larry? Oh yeah. Yeah. So burgers, and chips, oh. drinks. Um, so this Adult is sort of kind of, drink. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a this is a family show, remember? So, anyways, <laughs> I have this uh, this picture. Uh, this is like on my grocery list, and uh, kind of could be written on a whiteboard. So, of course, you want to make sure you're going to keep track of all this. And of course, we're all technology people and geeky and things like that. So we're going to build apps to keep track of our everything. So I'm going to go into my Power App here. And on my screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert uh, under my AI Builder. Let's do a text recognizer. And that's a different type of object uh, there. We can just add that to our screen. And of course, I want to begin to build out that list and maybe save it to a database. So let's just uh, insert a gallery here. Let's grab a quick one. It's a gallery control. Now that's still it's trying to tie into my common data service. But what I'm going to do here instead is instead of my items here, let's just go into that text recognizer uh, object that I've added to my screen. And I'm just going to add uh, the results. So here's that list. This is my gallery. It wants to read that result. So I've added two controls. I've added one formula. Now, obviously, what I should be doing is renaming everything and giving it nice colors and all that. But, you know, this is a very quick demo. Let's run this app now. And what I can do is I'm just going to take, let's say I'm running this on a tablet. I want to take a picture. And, and let's talk to my girl. There it is. Ribs, burgers, chip, chips, drinks. And it's going to do that. And now what's going to happen is it's going to go through that text recognizer. And look at that. It actually added all of those items that can definitely go into my, my shopping list or into the database there, all just kind of from that handwriting. And that's just sort of another example of one of those uh, objects that are kind of built directly into using the AI builder. Does it recognize cursive? Ah, good question. Uh, I mean, most with, most millennials haven't a clue, but thought maybe. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's for fun here. Let me let me uh, try to edit my. Uh, um, can I do this? No, I actually I created this in whiteboard. And then I'm gonna draw this with my mouse. So, so let's. Uh, oh, do I remember how? Here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I, beer to me. <laughs> let's see how well this she works. You probably meant to write green cheese, but. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, I was going to save. See, this is my new grocery list here. Here we go. Yeah. Um, let's go back to my app and let's add new image here. Let's see. I, I have a sneaky suspicion it's probably going to choke on it, but this is, let's see what happens. Uh, what do we here? Close. <laughs> well, that is kind of a shaky B. Yeah. So, okay, but anyways, yeah. 
Yeah, it did recognize the the EER. So yeah, it would it will work a little bit, Larry. We'll see. <laughs> cool. All right. So another one I want to show you is this the sediment analysis. So this is where I know there's a couple folks that said they're using Dynamics 365 for customer service. And I'm sure in a customer service situation, they're getting a lot of emails and information back and forth uh, about um, you know different things. So I'm just going to just add a new screen here, a blank screen. And let's quickly put in a text input field here. Uh, it's the big one. And then I'm going to also put a um, uh, label field here, here, sort of sub the, the result. And let's do another text input. So for my text input here, so I have this text input. This is just a place to add some text. Uh, here's my result and here's what I want that to be. So instead of my default here, what I'm going to do is I actually have AI builder commands in my formula. So again, we need to make sure we have that trial enabled, but I'm just going to start typing AI builder. And again, this is not too heavy code. I'm going to choose AI builder. And then I'm going to click, I'm going to analyze the sentiment. And what are we going to analyze? I want to analyze that text input one. Uh, do that, and we're going to pump out what the the actual sentiment is. And so if I run that, so it says neutral already because this is text input, but let's just run this. So if I type in something here, like uh, Larry is a great guy. Yay. Oh, it says positive result. Now, if I can change that a little bit and say Larry uh -oh. is cranky, then that's a negative result. So, cranky I mean, this is <laughs> exactly so. But we can see here, though, if we start feeding in the text of our emails from our customers or if they're entering a, a case like on a portal or something and they type in like my printer's broken or I'm not happy or this is really frustrating. The AI builder sentiment analysis is going to recognize that. And then the, the agents that are working on that particular case can see, ooh, this person is really negative. They're upset. I should make sure that, you know, we, we really help them out, try to bring that uh, result to a much more positive and, uh, you know, a, kind of a more positive thing moving forward to, to get to there. So that's just sort of some of the examples of, of how AI Builder works on the Power Platform. So again, I could have went through and there was a lot of different things I can uh, talk about. And, um, there's that, like I said, that business card reader, some of the form processing. This is within a Canvas app. Um, for those of you who maybe are beginning to play with Flow, with, with Flow, we can actually use the AI Builder commands as well. Um, I don't actually have an example here with that, but uh, that is something you can utilize with flow as well. And then of course, with the data that's sitting in the common data service, that's you know your Dynamics 365 data, you can have that feed in and then pump that back out like we did earlier with the uh, the inventory counts. So that's just sort of, I'm, I'm hoping I've given, I've given everybody a little bit of a taste of what AI Builder's all about in the Power Platform. And of course, with uh, Dynamics 365, um, there's definitely a lot more and definitely I would sort of encourage everybody there's uh, resources online. There's a lot of videos and tutorials and stuff. You can begin to play with this stuff yourself um, and, you know, kind of begin to see all this cool stuff that for AI, even six months or a year ago would have been completely out of reach. You would have needed an expert to put this stuff together. You saw how what I did. I maybe did like half a dozen mouse clicks and I actually got something up and running with that, with those AI builder tools. So I guess uh, I want to kind of turn it over to, you know, any kind of questions to the floor. If anybody has any questions there or comments or ways that they could see how they could use this in their own business. Dale, anything in the chat? Not yet. Okay. Well, we didn't emphasize people using that. That's fine. We got a small enough group. We wouldn't need that anyway. Cool. Anybody have any questions or comments for Nick? Well, Nick, first of all, it's amazing to see how you do this. 
I think you did a great job to give a, a sense of how easy AI is these days. So thanks for that. Let's get started with that. And look at your last example, it was about text recognition. How about um, sarcasm recognition? Do you think it would recognize sarcasm? <laughs> Let's 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 uh, let's see how if it would work or not. So uh, let's run this. Um, Larry is uh, uh, of, of a very a very intelligent and smart man. Yeah, it says positive. So yeah, positive that that is a sarcastic comment. <laughs> <laughs> try try doing something like oh. a very intelligent and ugly man. It should break on you knowing that's terribly untrue, but you know. yeah, it's it's negative. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm not sure if it if it how well it could pick up the subtleties of like real sarcasm or not. Um, <laughs> I think it just sort of goes to it probably identifies some of those key words um, and probably the ends of well, the ugly is a negative, uh, but very intelligent. Does that yeah. balance that out or not? Yeah, interesting. I, I, yeah, and I think it's it's very hard to do that on one sentence. You you probably will need to recognize a whole conversation before you recognize if it's uh, if it's honestly meant or if it's sarcasm. It's yeah, be very very hard. Yeah, it's it's interesting, and I know that there's um, uh, Gustav uh, from Sweden was saying that they were using some of this on one of their clients and. Uh, and it wasn't picking up the the swearing from Swedish very well. Um, and he had some pretty questionable words that it was just like not picking up and whatever like that at that time. So it's just interesting because I know that it says English. There's a certain set of languages that it can support as well. And I don't have that list with me, but it's I think it's a fairly short list right now anyway. But sure. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I, and the thing is, I haven't had a chance. Like I've I've just begun to play with it myself. I haven't found a project. I've I've said to some customers, "Oh, we need to check this out a little bit," but we haven't quite got to that point where we can actually. And that's where the real learning comes, right? When you actually begin to do this in a in an actual product uh, project or with a customer. It'd be interesting to know if it can tell uh, if it can understand both American English and say British English or Australian and other strains. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that'd be kind of tricky as well. Yeah, back I mean, to Ron's comment. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell in actual conversation sarcasm. And I think it should um, uh, work fine with typos. And seriously, the difference between English and, and Australian English is just typos. <laughs> yeah, pretty uh, much. Well, they spell things different down in Australia. Exactly. That, that's why I say it's just yeah. a typo. Organization. You know, they use the, uh, the term, pretty common, you know, got things all sorted out. Uh, we don't use that term so much here. Uh, we've got figured out or some other, other word, uh, you know, to replace the sorted. I always think it's interesting when I talk to the Australians and the Kiwis that they use sorted. Just talking some southern Ontario country here. So it said near, I said Pertnier got plowing done in the back 40. So <laughs> I grew up on a farm. So it's sort of like, yes, I'm almost done the plowing in the backfield kind of thing. Anyways. Well, that is, that is pretty neutral. <laughs> so, so a slightly different question then. Um, we've now looked at some of the, the standard functionalities, which can just drag and drop. One of the things I didn't find in this, uh, in this demo is um, to recognize parts of a text. So basically, you're looking for a unique identifier in a text, those kind of yeah. things. Is that yeah. available as well? Yeah, that's a great question, Ronald. That's the, uh, that'll be the form detect form detection. So let me just, uh, I don't really have anything. Let me just go to make here. Oh, New Schwanstein. That's the image of the day, I think. Uh. Um, so if I go into AI Builder, build. So we have, this is the forms processing. Mm -hmm. So what I can do here is, uh, this is what I talked about earlier about reading from a, a, a particular document and then identifying to particular parts. So 
Now, the thing is, you'll need five documents, and they also need to be sort of the same layout as well. So I know that they are coming up with something that's more like a receipt, like you take a picture of a receipt and be able to pull the different things out. Um, that's not uh, been released yet. But if I do something here, the add documents, I think I might have something. Uh, let me go here. Let AI yeah, Builder. Sources, forms processing, samples uh, to train. So these are PDFs. I think these are voting. So very simple, enter to win, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So if I choose this, upload those five documents. And then when I go on to train that model, it's going to first analyze. Now, I know that this thing takes a minute or two, but that's the idea. Because it's going to recognize that form, it's always going to know what's the first name, what's the last name, what's the email address. And then from those tags, be able we could pump that into a database or a table mm -hmm. um, based on that form layout. So this is the example I was saying that where if you have a lot of invoices from, a, from an organization, um, I saw a demo uh, given for this from someone who actually took the, uh, there's a form for the New Zealand government that I think it's like an employment form or something like that. And they were using that as their example. They had a bunch of these handwritten forms. They took a picture of them um, and were analyzing an AI builder and it was able to pull out the different uh, form labels and the different data that way. So again, that's just an example of how this could uh, save time. Is that sort of what you're looking at? Well, partially, um, it is great for another uh, use case we're seeing. But what, what, we're, uh, what we have is a free text field uh, on a form, on a web form, and somebody can type in a lot of information. And we ask the, these people to fill in their first name, last name, email address, and their uh, customer number. Now, some people start with the customer number, other people start with the email address, and other people start with their first name. And we don't know what's what. So we, I want to take that email address out. I want to take that customer number out and their name out of out of that already text field. So it's not exactly the same because we just, in the contrary of this one, we just don't know which field is on which location. Gotcha. Yeah. So like here, we know, right? We know what's what. Mm -hmm. So I can begin to tag, say this is a first, always a first name. This is always a last name, phone, uh, email address, that kind of yeah. thing. That, that's straightforward, but I think what you're asking for is, and again, this is, you know, put me on the spot a little bit, but that's all good. <laughs> um, no, if you don't you do know that, that, that's fine as I, well. I, I think <laughs> that's probably under the, it could be the category classification or the key phrase extraction. But I, I haven't played enough with it to really, to comment if that could fit that use case or not. Because it can't categorize text by its meaning. I mean, that kind of ties into sentiment analysis. The key phrase extraction, maybe that might be what you're looking for as well. Could be. Um, I would, I would sort of, yeah. Uh, you know, you can spin up a trial, and well, here's the docs, and <laughs> that might be. I love Power Apps. There's the sentiment. Yeah, I think there are some things here that could pull out particular. Oh yeah, so here's a table, Contoso restaurant, positive. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, 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 don't, I don't know, but it sounds like something that's... Yeah, most likely it is there or it will be there. Yeah, I think for sure. That's, uh, <laughs> it, it's worth looking to this a bit more. Yeah, for sure. Cool. I don't want to take too much, uh, too much of your time, so I'll leave some space for the other people to ask questions as well. Well, you know, Tex Tex Texans, Ron, they're uh, very shy. <laughs> Not the ones I know. <laughs> if you've got more, go with it. Um, I don't think so at this moment. I think it's it's really just get it going. Just keep trying. Spin up a demo. Uh, in fact, I think we, we already have an, um, an environment where we can use this. You mentioned something about licensing. Maybe you can tell a little bit about that. 
It's not putting, putting you on, on the spot too much now. No, it's not putting you on the spot. That's always the depressing part when we talk about licensing. So it depends on how you look at it. Yeah. So and you have to set a have to set a, a finite date that you're going to reference, right? Uh, oh, yeah, like it's 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 the pricing is per month. Um, and what it is now, it's so this is a couple things. And this I've had this conversation the other day. Um, it's let me actually find the Power Apps pricing guide. But it is. Well, per month, the, the minimum and this is I'm not a big fan of this minimum. It's. um. $500 US per month to have the AI builder. And that gives you uh, a certain amount of uh, they call build. Yeah. So is that per, Canadian or US? That's US. Okay. So Canadian is like a million dollars uh, right <laughs> now. But um, so this is with the AI builder. So you get that $500 per unit. Now there also is an AI builder calculator. So you can determine what what capacity or how much you need. Uh, sorry, it's AI Builder um, Calculator. There we go. Um, and it's funny because we're trying to, like trying to figure out Microsoft licensing is always a bit of a dark art to begin with. And I know I was working with this with a you know a customer the other day. It's like, oh, how much would this, how much would it cost? This kind of thing. So let's just say for processing forms. So let's say we get a thousand forms per month that we want to process. Um, let me give the example here. And so they say two thousand needs two units of AI builder. Do the calculate. It says it can do a thousand at one unit. So I don't really know the math behind it. Um, let's look at object detection. So let's say I need to do a thousand images. We want to identify our project. We want to train it. I don't know, I'm just going to pick a number randomly five times. Um, if I do that calculate, actually, I think I need to clear first. That was something. If we do that, so let's say 5,000 images, and we're going to do it three times a month. And Again, it keeps coming back to that one unit. So I know we were playing with this the other day. We were trying to figure out what's the what's the breaking point. <laughs> um, so this is, and to me, I like um, five hundred dollars is not. So that's a million. There we go, twenty six units. So that, yeah, that might kind of put things a little bit out of range. I what find is even, a unit. That's what we're. That's what I don't exactly understand what a unit is. Um, there is some documentation. Well, it's five hundred dollars. We know that part. Yeah, <laughs> it's five hundred dollars per unit. Um, I find that it's unfortunate because I feel that if they had like a starter skew, like even if it was a hundred dollars or a month or something like that, then at least people could start to play with it and then understand the value mm -hmm. and then do that, uh, do the math themselves. Looking like you know, look, let's look at the the warehouse count example I gave. So let's just say if this started out for like even 50 or $100 per month, then what they could do is very quickly build an app very much like I did. And then they could determine, well, normally if our warehouse count takes, let's say, five hours and takes, like, you know, uh, three people, that's 15 man hours or 15 people hours, sorry. Um, multiply that by an hourly rate. So if you're paying them 50 bucks an hour, well, then obviously an AI builder, if you can cut down either the number of the people or the number of time, then you can begin to see how the math will, how, how AI Builder will pay for itself. And that's just for anything in the Power Platform, right? You always want to make sure if you're going to implement a software, you want to see some either it's going to create increase uh, profit, it's going to decrease uh, time and expenses and that kind of thing, right? So that's where I find that $500 is a bit of a big bite to try it out for a couple months. Um, to determine if you're going to get that savings or not. Now, an interesting thing, though, and I've not looked too deeply into this, but I'm not sure if you guys have heard of um, um, uh, the power, not power autom um, robotic process automation. Mm -hmm. So the way that licensing works with that is, 
Power Automate, um, just RPA licensing. So what this is, is robotic process automation. Here we go. And what it is, is sort of like a, like if you have a legacy system, like a, um, like an old green screen or something like that, where it doesn't have an API or it's really hard to do an integration, you can use RPA and it will record, you could record the steps and kind of does a, it's a, does like a screen scraping exercise and it all ties into flow. So where I'm getting at with this is in terms of the pricing, the pricing for RPA just to start out is actually pretty not bad. It's like, I think $40 per user per month. So if you have one user in one process, it's, it's pretty good. But the other thing you get with this is, do they have the details here? But with this uh, RPA plan, even $40 per month, you get, um, a certain amount of a artificial intelligence or AI builder credit with that automatically, um, which is a pretty low rate to actually is, you know, so I'm almost thinking it might be worth just getting an RPA license just to get a little bit of that AI builder license, but I'm not sure if it gives you enough to really be effective with it or not. Um, but again, I'm not a licensing expert and you guys what know. What I... are you personally using for the AI you've been showing us? I'm using a trial. Okay. So if you actually saw Larry, when I set up my thing here, it says I have 30 days remaining on my AI builder free trial. Okay. Now did you get that trial separately from say a standard CE trial? Uh, nope. So if you have, if you actually spin up a 30 day trial, Larry, you can actually uh -huh. go into, you'll see AI builder. And it'll just be a little button that said, try AI and you click okay. there and you're in, you're in for 30 days. Okay. What about licensing? If you have uh, Dynamics 365, you know, customer engagement or something like that, and, uh, you know, things like power apps are included in, in that is power uh, is uh, AI. I, mm, I don't know for sure. I don't think so. I think uh, it's a set, it's a separate SKU you need to buy on top of it, but I could be wrong. I know that some of the customer insight stuff uses some AI, some mm -hmm. AI technology, but I don't think it's AI builder technology. I think it's the Azure side. So I don't believe, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure if Chris is still on or not, or if he can, if he wants, if he's brave enough to talk about that. Um, I'm here, what was the question? <laughs> Chris, we were a quick question. Larry had a, a good question about AI builder licensing. Mm -hmm. um, and he was wondering, his question was, is there any AI builder uh, credits or licensing that's included with Dynamics 365 licenses? Oh, that is a good one. I don't think so. I don't think that you automatically get that like you do with uh, Power Power Apps and Power Automate and stuff like that. I don't I don't believe so. OK, so that's the same answer I gave him. I wasn't I'm not 100 percent sure. So at least at least either we're both wrong or we're both right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the answer is no. Um, yeah. I, I'm almost certain because if you think about it from the dynamics perspective, all the uh, AI stuff is like customer insights and customer service insights, et cetera, and that's all separately licensed products anyway. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you uh, helping us out here. Sure. So I'm not sure if I completely answered the question on licensing. So, I mean, the, the, the quick answer is it's, yeah, it's $500 per, in, that's per environment per month. But that gives you like one unit of <coughs> um, one unit of AI builder credits, and we gun, we begun to saw the calculator of sort of what exactly we would wherever so I had that. environment, at least you could have hundreds of users in that environment. Absolutely, yeah. And if you had like a use case where you need to process like a thousand forms, then it's not that every user is processing a thousand forms, right? You probably have like two or three mm -hmm. people that are doing that kind of work. Well, if you had a bunch of, of folks going out and inventorying stores or something, that could be a, uh, you know, pretty cost-effective application. Yeah, I, I think like everything, right, Larry? You need to uh, balance out the the investment yeah. in software versus the the productivity and and time and all those other uh, benefits you get. And especially if you only use it once a year, then you can spin it up and down. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> get your 
Cool. Yeah. Any other friction and then start it back up next year, huh? There, there you go. Any other uh, any other questions or uh, Larry, are we going to move into ask the experts uh, section? Well, actually, the roundtable discussion. And I always think that's probably the most important uh, thing. And let me give one last chance. Anybody uh, have any other uh, questions for anybody? Uh, Nick in particular. Bring it up to the round table, too. Yep, no. Let's go to. So I'll give it. back control to you. Probably yours. Let's see. I'll stop sharing. So. Well, there's Dale. Let's see if I can get rid of that real quick. <laughs> oh, where's my. Uh, <laughs> There's Ron. Hey, Ron. By the way, for those of you who don't know Ron, Ron is a uh, former MVP of many years for Dynamics uh, 365 CRM. When did you when did you first get awarded, Ron? Can't hear mute. you. I'm on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, it must have been 2007, and I started working yeah. with you just about the same time as you did, Larry. When yeah, did I think so. About five. Uh, custom attributes to a contact, then you got a SQL error and you couldn't remove those fields anymore. <laughs> I remember that. You remember that as well, Dick? Yeah, I started ver working with version one. Congratulations. Uh, I was version 1.2. <laughs> that was, I'm glad that was over. <laughs> Didn't last long in my, my uh, space. Okay, so though there comes everything I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. All right, so big hand for Nick. Thank you, sir. Okay, round table discussion. Uh, topic might be, are you using Power Apps? Um, or we have a list of other uh, uh, discussion starters. What version you're on, we already talked about that. Uh, Upgrading, well, if you're on uh, online, you're going to be automatically upgraded at some point. If you're on-premises, good luck. Uh, considering, up, I think these are old uh, suggestions. Anyway, usually uh, people can just throw out comments and uh, uh, see where it goes from there. So I'll open up the floor for uh, anybody who would like to uh, uh, talk about something. Well, that sounds pretty quiet. Ron, what are you doing these days? What kind of projects are you getting into? And maybe tell people a little bit about who you work for and uh, so on. Yeah, we. Uh, I, I work for iFunds. I'm sort of the tech guy. And there's so many technical guys there who know a lot more, but still I get to be the tech guy. And what we do at iFunds is we build an ISV solution for the nonprofit sector specifically for nonprofits, and it's about donation management and, uh, and fundraising, so a lot of communication and marketing features. And we're running uh, the newest software in online, but we still get a bunch of customers running on-premise and we're trying to get into online. That's a difficult, difficult story. Mm. So yeah, that's in a nutshell what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to do get as many customers as possible to CRM online, bring down the cost for maintenance and support, and therefore spend, uh, yeah, make sure that the, the donation money gets spent on the actual goal of the organization instead of IT. And that's where I'm looking for, uh, for this topic for AI. How can we bring AI into the nonprofit sector? Wow. That's basically my, my, my real question for, um, for today. Now, it's a real broad question, but definitely one that's top of my mind. How are we going to bring uh, AI and, and real innovation into the, into the nonprofit sector? Okay. I don't have the answer yet, but <laughs> just like you guys, looking for some projects around AI and some, some fun new stuff instead of just the usual, um, the usual power apps that most of us are, are working on a daily basis with. Really want to get started on something new, something, something wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Something amazing. 
Well, if somebody yeah. would do something wow, it would be Ron Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had one. Mad Hatter. Sorry? The Mad Hatter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you know me way, way too well. <laughs> <laughs> I run across that, a picture of you in that every once in a while. That I costume. can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, up in Austin? What do you guys uh, got going? BJ or Sandra? I was gonna let BJ talk. Uh, he had he's into it more than. <laughs> um, right now we're working on. Um, redoing our interface since the current one we have is getting ready to go obsolete um, and just You're trying using the classic interface correct yeah correct so uh, we are in the process of getting ready to go away for years <laughs> <laughs> so um, since they were pushing that so that's what we've been mainly working on and making sure that it works for us and it's very user friendly for the reps uh, when uh, trying to make sure they're able to locate everything when they're putting in their data and it flows um, with ease. And then basically just trying to find other ways to, I guess, use it to pull data in for other departments that we work with so that at the end we can generalize reports to see how we're doing with KPIs and things like that for our for the uh, transportation side of it for mm -hmm. um, the rest of the group. So, so you all are, are part of the Austin uh, transportation system? Yes, we operate the uh, entire transportation uh, system for the city of Austin and surrounding okay. areas. Okay. How many users do you have? Um, uh, within my group, it's a total of 16 of us, and then we have what Jyoti and VJ, a few others there. So, and some other departments that use it to go in and uh, read the reports and um, clear them out. So, ooh, I think we have at least about. Uh, we have around 150 users, like. So, I thought so. Yeah. That's a lot, and but we're trying to clean it up now because we've had a lot of transitioning, so it may have gone down. But right now we have about that many. Wow. Has the transportation needs in Austin uh, uh, gone down somewhat with everything that's been going on? Or yes, uh, ridership has um, ha did drop, and so we're on a modified schedule to right now kind of meet the needs. So. Um, as we monitor to see what, how things are going to open, that's how we determine if we're going to be able to add more service. But right now, it's uh, pretty uh, minimal. Uh, we keep it running uh, between the hours of 6 and about 11, um, seven days a week, um, since it's just the rush is just not there. Yeah, I bet not. <laughs> <laughs> not until everything starts getting back to full normal and all that. I assume Correct. you're using that uh, off time to do your cleaning and all that kind of junk? Yes, uh, that's what we've been doing um, in between that and add, trying to look at things that we could add in there. VJ has been working on a, a way for me to do a, a audit different than how our providers use the system to do their audit. So we're, we're doing some testing and trying to see how we can uh, use it more to what we need it for. And hopefully okay. get out some of the other databases that we were working with. Cool. So Sandra, a quick uh -huh. question. Yes, Based sir. on the presentation you just had, do you see any pointers, any lead where you can use AI in your system? It I was looking at that. It looks like there's a possibility. Um, I would have to get with VJ to see if it's possible and then see how we could work it in there for us as in because one of the major things that I do want to see is that um, because we have so customers and we have customers who call us on a daily basis some of them when they call we end up generating similar contacts and 
I would just I wish there was a way that some a program like that or some functionality could just knock it out where you couldn't add the same person in. Because I have to go in and like merge those and clean it up and oh, yeah. it just continuously, especially during the web. I don't know why our web uh, version wants to, when a person enters in a new form for us through our web form, it creates a, a brand new contact form like they never had it. So I have one customer in there right now. I've cleaned out 150 times and she's been in there 150 more times. So it's just like... <sighs> So if, if I could find something like this, if something like that could help kind of deter that, that would be great. But I, right now, I know we, it's like a luck of the straw. If I could find, we could find something to help us eliminate that process of dual repeats of a customer in our system. So your, your problem is not to get data into the system easily. Your problem is getting data out of the system easily. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have to like, try to first get them all together because there's now one name that may have five records, another name. And so trying to figure out, put them all together so I can generate that report for that one person. And um, when, when, a, when a customer, if they call in to do a public information request because they want whatever they put into us, yeah, it gets really difficult because I need to, now I got to go in and see and then see if make sure the name was spelled correctly. So I end up pulling a whole lot of data and some of it uh, is unnecessary, but then trying to filter out what's correct and what's not correct can be uh, tedious at times. I think you're not the only one facing that. So let's look at uh, the specialist here. Nick, Larry, how do you guys uh, work with duplicate data and uh, how do you how do use I that to, to merge that? Uh, how do I do what? Uh, handle duplicate data. So contacts multiple times in the system. And worse is even when the contact has subordinate records. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I can come up with an example for, for Sandra's uh, business case. But if you have a contact and one contact has, uh, has an account and that account then also, well, um, account might not be the best word, a, a bank account. You, your system stores bank accounts. You have a contact and each contact has a bank account. Then you want to merge those contacts. Well, the subordinate records are identical as well. They also need to be merged. Well, that How merging you, is one of the call? one of the uh, features you can do in uh, in setting up a relationship. The relationship behaviors you can specify whether you you would merge there. I don't work with a lot of customers these days. My my main customers when I have them, which have been real slow, as I mentioned. Uh, has been just teaching, you know, the the, uh, the courses. So I don't have to worry about those kind of problems so much anymore. Uh, <laughs> the, the, dupli the duplicate detection has always been there. Well, it's been there since yeah, version four, four, I think. Yeah, but, like, four. Yeah. yeah, but I've always found that a couple little quirks with you always, you have to set it up correctly to make sure it's the matching. And if sort of somebody could enter, you know, they enter, you know, uh, Catherine spelt with a K one day and Catherine with a C the next day. Well, then mm -hmm. the duplicate detection is not going to pick up on that. Or exactly. They're gonna, yeah, they're going to use their Gmail account one day and their Outlook the next day. And it just so the duplicate detection has always been a little it's it's good, but it's not great, I guess, is a good way to put yeah, it. Oh, I agree. Um, and then the other thing is, too, as soon as you make a change to the system or you make changes to the fields, then all of a sudden you publish all your changes. Well, then it shuts off the duplicate detection. And then you don't realize, well, why is it my duplicate detection? Why is it shut off? And you realize, oh, yeah, last week I published some new changes or, uh, you know, we brought in a, you know, depending on how you're doing your solution management. So you just got to keep on top of that. It's it's pretty tedious. Um, and then the other thing with the with the merging is you can only do two at a time. So, yes. as, as yeah. Sandra, I'm sure you've lived through that that hassle of the 150. Well, you have to do that 200 times because you have yeah. to go through and yeah. do two at a time. Um, I know that I've seen some some systems that will help clean up that data. Uh, some other third parties. Uh, I think there's a company in the UK called Data Eight. A um, couple good. Mark uh, Carrington's one of the guys there. Uh, Matt Beers, another guy, who works there too, and they've written some. Uh, power Automate extensions that will actually go through your data and put it through AI. Um, and I think try to find some duplicates and stuff like that. Now, of course, that's a paid tool. But again, like all of these tools, right? If you, if it's it's worth the investment, if it saves you the time. Um, I like your AI builder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Um, anyways, I, 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 again, there's always the, th the great thing about this platform too, is there's always 10 different ways to solve a problem. Um, but I, I, I feel your pain, Sandra. I've had a lot of customers in the same boat that, you know, we have a, you know, all of a sudden they, you know, they go through an exercise once a year, they clean up all their data. Well, you know how it is. Your data is only it's it's a hundred percent on day one, but then day two it's already down to ninety five percent and mm -hmm. kind of drops off. Yes. Um, just trying to see if I can find that uh, that link because I yeah uh, Mark and Matt did a a demo last year on duplicate detection. You lost your arm, Dale. <laughs> Let your wife who floated in real quickly. Yeah, I, I had her come in. I was trying to show her something. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I'll like again, this I'm they're not sponsors or I'm not endorsing a product pro product. But I'll throw it in the chat window a link to um, this company in the UK that has a a duplicate detection uh, add-in for for Dynamics 365. So, if anything, it's just always about awareness. You need to sort of take a look at that, and uh, that could be something that might help you out. And you could merge multiple contacts at the same time. Okay. So, so anyways, did you get the link in the chat window, Sandra? Yes, I did. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah, wonder no about uh, Kingsway Soft. Yeah, because I know Dan. Yeah, Daniel had some stuff too. So when we talk about Kingsway Soft, that's more of an integration tool. Uh -huh. um, and of course, it's uh, Daniel was an MVP up until last year, and he's the he's the head honcho there. Um, but what that is is an integration tool, and that's also it's really meant you can move data from one system to another. But I think he had some data cleaning stuff built in there as well. I'm just taking a look now. I'll just put the I'll put the, his link in the chat window as well. Um, Daniel's a good guy, and Larry and Ronald, you know Daniel, right? So yeah, he, he is a good guy indeed. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put that link there as well. That's okay. it. Yeah. Thank you, you very it. much. Yes, sir. Yeah. No problem. Van and Daniel also has uh, some of his dev tools that have been free. So take a look at that for licensing if you're just for dev purposes and stuff too. Okay. Yeah. So the dev. Yeah. yeah the name dev of it is free. all one word: King's Way Soft. And I'll put that up here. And the the website is www.kingswaysoft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got the I got the website in the chat window, Larry. So okay, that. I'm putting up a. Uh, uh, a notepad for some other things anyway. Cool. So uh, for anybody that's, of course, because Microsoft keeps releasing stuff, uh, for anybody who's looking for something to read in July, I think the release wave two is being released second week of July or something like that. Or mm -hmm. So that's all oh, new boy. stuff that's... New stuff's coming for the fall. I haven't finished reading the... The last release wave yet <laughs> or the one before <laughs> yeah well at least they can wave it yeah so we get to have new new stuff every other day well i'm not complaining larry because i'm sure and rob will probably remembers this too in 2007 2008 we're always waiting two or three years for the next oh, version yeah. right and pestering yeah. Microsoft, like when when's the next when's Serum five coming out? When's it you know when's yeah. like yeah. Um, then they, now it's, they didn't call it five. No, no, no. That's right. <laughs> I'm still waiting for number two to be released. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, we're kind of getting close to a cutoff time, uh, especially for the uh, the folks in in uh, Austin. And Chris, you're welcome. Of course, Ron is welcome too as well. I have a uh, an email list that I maintain for the San Antonio uh, user group, and if you would email me, and I'm going to try to put my email thing up here for you, if you would email me at larry at lynchcomputer.com with the email address you would like me to uh, 
to add you to the list with, I'll be uh, more than happy to do that. It's the uh, the San Antonio CRM uh, UG chapter uh, email that I personally run. So if you're interested in that, uh, go for it. And then of course here is uh, Kingsway Soft. So I'll leave that up for a moment, and then I need to get back to a couple of slides to uh, to finish off what we're doing here. I threw your email address in the uh, the chat window as well, Larry, so people should be okay. able to grab that. Okay, very good. So anyway, if you're interested in being on the email list, it's not overly uh, uh, voluminous, so uh, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be okay, a fire. And it's both .net and .com, right, Larry? Because I had .net uh, yeah, online. Yeah, .com is the primary one. I used to do .net, and uh, it'll still it'll still go the same same mailbox. But I kind of when I switched over from uh, from my local uh, server to uh, uh, Office 365, I had to kind of differentiate a little bit. So I started using the .com. Anyway, let's get back here to the, uh, the the slides. Hopefully, you can see the slide for discussion opportunities. Not yet. Nope. You see your okay. notepad still. Okay, just want to make sure. So meetings. Uh, we try nope. to we've tried to nope. meet about every nope. uh, quarter. Larry, still here. There, okay. We still see your notepad. Oh, do you? Okay. Well, I probably need to change something here. Then how do I? Oh, there they are. They're swapped, swapped over here. And let me go here and go to, to, to let's see, this is probably, no, this is probably it. Not yet. There you go. There they are. Okay, well, I was flipping back and forth between a couple of them. Anyway, we have typically tried to hold a meeting, and I think CRMUG likes the meetings to be on a, uh, uh, well, on any basis you can get people in on them, but uh, probably on a quarterly basis. Um, with the new format and doing virtual, you know, we could try to do meetings uh, more often than that if you would like, or not. Uh, try to keep them uh, quarterly and so on. If we did a, if we do quarterly, and quite frankly, and, and because of summer and everything else that's going on, we'll probably, uh, you know, kind of keep it as is. But our next meeting would probably be sometime in December. I'm thinking. Let everybody get out of uh, vacations and so on. I've got one of our local uh, members is uh, went on vacation today and tomorrow. Another one's taking home of a hubby just got out of the hospital. So uh, uh, anyway, we'll, uh, uh, if you want to use that email address and let me know what your preferences are on, uh, on meetings and so on. Also, whether you like this shorter format, um, those of you in Austin uh, who haven't been to one of our normal meetings uh, probably aren't uh, familiar with that. And of course, that's a long drive for you. But I would think in December we probably ought to have a, a get together, if not before. Anyway, uh, we'll probably make our next meeting a virtual meeting. Uh, always looking for for topics. So if you have a topic you'd like to uh, to, he to hear and see, please let us know. Also, uh, member showcase. If you'd like to have your uh, business uh, have a few minutes to to. Uh, discuss your business and explain to folks what it is you do and, and so on, uh, you can uh, do that as well. There is a QR code here. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I can't. Well, I guess I could do it with my phone. But anyway, uh, if you want to give us feedback on today's meeting or the evaluation or, or whatever, uh, if you want to click this key code, I assume that's what it's for. It's the first time I've seen the key code, the uh, QR code on the uh, on the slides for this. So. And, and if you signed up for the meeting through the user group, you should already have the the emails already got sent out for the survey. So as it, okay, I haven't seen that yet, but uh, came out about thirty minutes ago. Okay, well that's why I haven't seen it yet. Very good, thank you, Dale. So with that, thank you for attending, and we're four minutes uh, early. <laughs> which I think is pretty good. Thanks, time. Nick. Good job. Thank you, all. Yeah, Nick, thank you very much.
No problem. Thank you. So I'll, I'll uh, back again. Nick's been doing kind of a series.